Hey guys, it's Chris. From the real life Florida Joker to a restaurant's disastrous idea of Monkey Mondays, here are 10 of the craziest stories about Florida. Number 10. Grandma's Dentures In Tutsville, Florida, one early Friday morning, a grandmother opened her blinds expecting to see her fluffy cat lounging on the back porch. What this grandmother saw instead was a nude man exposing himself directly to her. She was understandably shocked and appalled. According to the grandmother herself, she opened up the blinds and said, What the hell? That's not my cat! Little did this pervert know that he had messed with the wrong old lady. Penelope Peterson had worked in security and law enforcement before, and she was not scared of this guy. Instead, she popped out her teeth and growled at the man, frightening him off her porch. Grandma then called the police, and they arrested the suspect, who later appeared in court on charges of both burglary and exposing himself. In front of the judge, 28-year-old Axel Rivera wore a jail outfit and some flip-flops, which was far more than he showed to poor Penelope Peterson on her porch at 2 o'clock in the morning. Number 9. The Florida Joker The Joker, Batman's arch-nemesis, is real, and he's been chilling in Florida. The man is actually nicknamed the Joker because he has tattoos all over his face that make him look just like the comic book character. His look is very similar to that of Jared Leto's Joker in Suicide Squad. He even has tattoos on each of his cheeks that make him look like his mouth has been split from ear to ear and then stitched back up. Just like the Joker that Heath Ledger portrayed in The Dark Knight. Ha 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 is tattooed below his eye, just like the character's signature. And Joker, the word, is scribbled on his forehead right next to his Batman logo tattoo with the word F Batman on the wings, with a digger piercing the bat's heart. He also had his hair dyed green, just like the villain. Let's just say this guy is really committed to the role. Well, this wannabe Joker was in the Florida news recently for being charged with possession of illegal substances. This isn't a huge crime but he was arrested a second time just over a week later for pointing a gun at passing cars while basically standing in the middle of the street, acting an awful lot like his alter ego. When an officer arrived on the scene, he spotted Lawrence Sullivan and immediately recognized that guy. After all, he's kind of hard to miss. The officer questioned Sullivan and gave him a pat-down, at which point he discovered a Smith & Weston 380 in his pocket. He was then arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. Sullivan himself said he wasn't waving his gun around, but he had definitely had one in his pocket because he wanted to feel safe. Sullivan also said that once he got inside jail, he was treated like a celebrity because of his ridiculous face tattoos. But Sullivan didn't actually spend too much time in general population. He was taken into the psychiatric unit, as is fitting for someone who wants to be the Joker. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, he also has the tattoos 666 and an upside-down cross in front of one of his ears. His family said in a statement that Sullivan just recently inked his entire face as a way to express himself. His mother stood up for him by saying he's a good kid. You know, he has a lot of tattoos, but he's a nice kid with some problems. He's mentally disabled and is handicapped. Number 8. The No-Armed Stabber A homeless man in South Florida with no arms was recently charged with stabbing a tourist from Chicago. According to the Miami Beach Police, 46-year-old Jonathan Crenshaw held a pair of scissors between his feet and used them to stab Cesar Coronado sometime around midnight early on a Tuesday. Crenshaw was lying face down when the Chicago tourist walked up and for absolutely no reason punched him in the head. Crenshaw managed to get the scissors between his feet and stabbed his attacker, at which point he fled. But this wasn't the story given by the tourist. A friend who was traveling with the stabbing victim claimed that they asked Crenshaw for directions when he flipped out and stabbed Coronado in the arm, forcing him to go to the hospital. Luckily, it's pretty hard to kill someone with a pair of scissors between your feet, and Coronado made a full recovery. Crenshaw was arrested and charged with aggravated battery. His motive for stabbing the poor guy is still unknown, but it's just one of those things that kind of just happened in Florida. Number 7. Mastermind Counterfeiter A man in Florida was arrested for counterfeiting United States currency and trying to sell the bills on Facebook. According to the arrest affidavit, a deputy investigated the case at the home of Levy Newberry, following a complaint from his landlord. The landlord claimed that Newberry tried to pay her rent in counterfeit $5, $10, and $20 bills that he had printed out at the library. This guy was not exactly your criminal genius. The landlord told the police that Newberry had pages of printed counterfeit money all over the floor of his bedroom. When the deputy arrived at his home, the jig was up. 
Newberry told the officer that he was simply printing pictures of money that he had taken from Pinterest at the Newport Ritchie Public Library. Unfortunately for this criminal mastermind, he was already on probation for dealing stolen property. The officer informed Newberry that what he was doing was most certainly illegal. Even though Newberry dumped his obviously fake money in a sewer drain before the officer could ask him questions, he got arrested anyway and taken to the Lando Lakes Detention Center. But he did claim that he had found a buyer on Facebook willing to pay him $250 for $500 in fake money. I mean, you really can't argue with that, can you? I mean, you kind of can. Let me know your thoughts and what you would have said to this guy if you were the landlord in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, too. Number 6. Monkey Mondays A restaurant in Florida thought it would be a great idea to start something called Monkey Mondays. Monkey Monday was a day of the week in which the restaurant allowed people to bring in their pet monkeys. It all started when a local couple brought their own monkeys with them to the restaurant to eat on the patio and it was a huge hit. Everyone loved Monkey Mondays. That is, until a child got bit and Monkey Mondays got shut down immediately. This happened at Carabas Italian Grill in Stewart. The boy who got bit tried to grab hold of a nine-month-old capuchin monkey named Jojo. Well, Jojo didn't like being grabbed, and it bit the kid on his pinky and the little boy had to go to the hospital. According to Fox News, the couple had previously warned the child's father not to touch the monkey. Like, obviously, don't touch the monkey. But of course, the child touched the monkey anyways and he got bit and he'll forever be known as the kid that totally ruined Monkey Mondays for the rest of us. Number 5. Blind Minion Attacked a man has been arrested after one of the most brutal attacks ever on a person in a costume. And of course, this happened in broad daylight in Florida. It happened when a man attacked a blind and mentally handicapped person dressed in a minion costume for absolutely no reason. Jamie Rome was the man in the costume. He was dressed up like a little yellow minion from the Despicable Me franchise on the boardwalk of Daytona Beach to promote the local store where he worked. Jamie was approached by a group of people who lifted him up and dropped him onto the pavement. The entire assault was captured on a surveillance camera. When Jamie tried to stand, a man later identified as Ryan Nyhart then punched him back to the ground. Jamie was screaming for help and the other people on the boardwalk simply watched it happen. He wasn't saved until his co-workers heard his desperate screams and ran out of the shop to beat away his attackers. The police eventually arrived and arrested the assailant and Jamie was back at work in the minion costume the next day, a little shaken but in good spirits. Jamie loves to wear that costume. He refers to it as his happy place because when he wears it, no one can tell he's blind or disabled. What a sweet guy. Number 4. Stupid Car Thief Florida is the home of the stupidest car thief in history. Fort Pierce officer Robbie Troutman was sitting in his patrol car at 5 o'clock in the morning with the engine running. Everything was completely normal until he heard his door handle click. Someone was trying to break into his police car while he sat in the front seat. And in case you're wondering, this was not an unmarked cruiser. This was a real police car sitting in front of the real police station. And there was an officer in the front seat for crying out loud. And in case you've been living under a rock, a lot of police officers work at a police station. And nonetheless, the worst car thief ever tried to open up the door. Suffice it to say, he didn't get away with the car. The officer got out to investigate. The car thief ran and hid behind another vehicle, but he was quickly captured man was later charged with attempted grand theft auto of a motor vehicle along with loitering and prowling. Number 3. Drug Peddling drive through Two people were running their very own drug business out of their Florida mobile home. These clever entrepreneurs thought it would be a bright idea to install a drive through window on their mobile home to sell drugs quicker without people getting out of their cars. They even had a sign with an arrow pointing at the window and a clock that let people know when they would be back if they were going out. As you can imagine, this bright Florida idea didn't go over very well in the end. Police quickly got wind of the drive through drug shop and decided to put it out of business. Mackenzie Dobbs and William Parrish Jr. have since been arrested and are facing multiple charges related to the sale of fentanyl, one of the worst, strongest, and deadliest opioid painkillers on the market. The couple had been peddling the deadly substance through their kitchen window without ever even leaving their house. Number 2. Do Not Resuscitate at a Florida hospital, a patient arrived with the strangest tattoo hospital workers had ever seen. This man was admitted unconscious and had a history of health problems. He also had a very high blood alcohol level and no identification or family members present. On his chest was a tattoo that said, Do Not Resuscitate. 
The staff at the hospital were in kind of a conundrum. The patient was 70 years old, and he had an explicit denial of any life-saving treatments inked onto his skin. The doctors attending the man first didn't want to honor the tattoo because it seemed like the right thing to do. After all, if a dying person comes into the hospital, the right thing to do is usually to save them. But then things got really complicated. The hospital's ethics consultant got involved and gave the explicit order not to save the man's life. Do not resuscitate orders are wildly complex, and if one is clearly tattooed on someone's chest, I guess it must be respected. But you know, at the same time, tattoos are in absolutely no way legally binding. In the end, all of the confusion resulted in the man dying. A do not resuscitate order was issued and the patient died right there in the hospital. So what do you think of this one? Number 1. An Angry Leopard A man in Florida paid for a full contact experience with a rare black leopard. He paid $150 to play with this big cat. However, the cat clearly wasn't involved in the decision making and mauled the man instead. Dwight Turner was expecting to rub the cat's belly and take some pictures, but when he entered the backyard enclosure, that giant cat just attacked him. Are you surprised? I mean, he was. According to Global News, the leopard went straight for his jugular and even tried to crush the man's head inside of its mouth. The big cat ripped off part of Dwight's scalp and tore his ear in half. Dwight spent the next week in a hospital and had to get several different surgeries before he fully recovered from the attack. And then, in a completely obscene move, Dwight turned around and tried to sue the private animal sanctuary for putting his life in danger. Talk about not taking responsibility for your own actions. Let's be honest here, if you enter a cage with a wild animal, anything that happens next is entirely your fault. Thanks for watching. How do you feel about visiting Florida after this? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for all the latest videos from the channel. We'll see you next time.